Welcome back everyone. A uh, quick little video. As you know, I'm working on the monoboard project at the moment and just trying to get all the nuts and bolts sorted out to make sure everything works together. Uh, the last video I did was looking at interfacing to the MPU 6050 and that went really, really well. Uh, today I'm going to take a look at the pulse width modulation outputs of the STM32. We need to vary the frequency, we need to actually increase the frequency quite a bit above the normal and to do that we need to play around with the timers. Anyway, I did a little bit of testing and just wanted to show you what I found. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so I'm just going to run through a little test sketch I did for testing the STM32PWM outputs. Let's start at the top. So I'm just defining um, all the pins now. These are actually the pins that will be used with the circuit that I've developed that I've already run through in a previous video. Um, but just scrolling down, setting up hardware timer objects for timer 2 and timer 3. And this PWM value is just something used for testing. We'll see down below, but just initializing that integer value as 0. Okay, so in the setup, uh, setting up the whole sensor pins as inputs setting up the six outputs for PWM. Moving down here, what we need to do is vary the frequency of the PWM output. Basically, the standard PWM frequency is just miles too low to use the way I want to. So what I'm looking to do is to set this to around the 35, 36 kilohertz and what we need to do is actually change the way the actual timers work for the PWM pins. Now, the pins that we're using are controlled by timer 2 and timer 3. So we're going to do exactly the same thing to both of these timers so that everything operates the same. So what I wanted to do is just do a test and make sure that we're actually getting the right frequency from it. So these set of commands here are all about changing that frequency. So the first thing we do is just pause the timer. We set the prescale factor to 1, which basically the uh, 72 megahertz clock is normally divided by a factor here. And that output of that prescaler is fed into the actual timer. Now what I'm doing is setting it to a prescale factor of 1, which means basically don't divide the frequency down at all. So the time is going to be supplied with the full 72 megahertz signal. And the next thing we're doing is setting the overflow to a value of 2000. So basically the timer is going to count from 0 to 2000 and then uh, reset back to zero. Now that 2000 counts is the full PWM period and the duty cycle will fit within that period. So if you work out the period of the 72 megahertz frequency and multiply that by 2000 and then invert that again, so it goes back to frequency, you'll find that that actually comes out to around 36 kilohertz. So the next thing we do is um, do a refresh on the timer and then resume it. And we're doing that for both of those timers. And then underneath that, I'm just setting the PWM output to zero. So effectively that sets the duty cycle to zero. So it should be just off all the time. And the next thing I do in the setup is just initialize the serial port and wait until it's ready. Now in the loop, all we're doing there is actually listening on the serial port until some information is available. 
and basically just parsing an integer value. So I can send a number down the serial port and that will be loaded into that variable PWM value. And then it's echoed back to, on the serial port and then that gets written out to the phase A top output. And with the overflow set to 2000, what we should find is an integer value of between zero and 2000 should vary the duty cycle from basically 0% to 100%. So I've got a little circuit hooked up here and I've just got a lead on that phase A top output and we're just going to have a look at it with the crow and just see what result we get. So let's do that now. Give that a reset and upload it. Okay, so that's done. It should be zero and if we look at the crow, it's most certainly as close to zero as you'll ever get. Let's put in 1000. Um, that should be 50% duty cycle and see what we get. Okay, so that is a beautiful looking uh, square wave with uh, what looks to be certainly close to 50% duty cycle and it's telling me it's as near as damn at 36 kilohertz which is perfect so i'm just measuring across um, a lead that i have on that particular output let's try 500 and that looks pretty right let's try 1500 and again that looks good as well uh, let's try 1950 yep that looks about right and if we go right to 2000 yep that's pretty much high all the time so this is looking really really nice try 50 yep this is looking perfect so i think as a starting point i'm just going to run it at uh, the 36 kilohertz and we'll see how we go from there if you like what i'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when i post something new and i'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at